Love the chest and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working out, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. All right, welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack 2022 Fantasy Football Team Previews. We're going to be talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And to do that with me is Mike LaPlante. Let's jump right into it with the quarterbacks. And of course, we all know Tom Brady, the GOAT. I finally have to admit it. Overall 76, QB7. Um... What's there to say about Tom Brady, man? Like, you know, I, the guy, the guy's going to be good, but I mean, is, is he like just how, like la last year? What he was like QB three, uh, QB four, I believe. QB four. I mean, he was really damn good. Like, he's all the way down to QB seven now. We don't know. Nope, you're right. QB three. We don't know if Godwin's going to be healthy to start the year. Kind of doesn't sound like it. Mike no. Mike Evans is still there. Um, so, you know, we don't know the state Way of Gronk. Funny. We don't, we, yeah, we don't know Gronk if he's coming back yet. So, I mean, like he's losing some weapons. So, you know, that's where the ranking comes down for, um, but are you buying in at QB seven knowing that Tom Brady can just figure this out, right? Man, I think we've learned in the 22 years now it'll be of Tom Brady. Long ass time. So yeah, you, you can't bet against him, unfortunately. Um, at QB seven season, yeah, twenty third, yeah, damn. Um, and and we almost thought he, we were rid of him too. He retired to the off season for what forty three days. Dude, I knew that wasn't gonna be. <laughs> Everyone was like, "You're back." No, you don't say. Let the, let the memes fly, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, at QB seven. Obviously, I'm not buying him at QB3. Uh, I thought what he nah. did last year was uh, a feat for his age, uh, leading the league in passing yards, passing attempts, and passing touchdowns. It's just asinine. Um, and completions. But QB7, I could I could buy in at him at QB7. The guy has played for 23 years. They have built a good offensive line around him. They brought back some players once Tom Brady came back. Um, I think he has just enough weapons. He's got more weapons than he ever had in New England at the end of his uh, tenure there. At the and, end, yeah. That's not yeah. hard to beat. No, it isn't. But, I mean, we've seen that he can do it with, you know, Mike Evans and, uh, what was it, Antonio Brown and uh, Scotty Miller. And, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not doubting Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, he, he does have his moments. I, I'm sort of like right on the fence with QB7. I have, I have him ranked as QB8. Like, yeah, you know, I, I still, because there's obviously no turn. rushing floor there. I think the loss of Godwin and Gronk are going to hurt. Now, look, if Gronk comes back, that changes that changes things. I think I bump him up to maybe QB6. I'll be honest. Like, I, I just put him right up there. Um, it's hard, man. QBs are tough this year. So many guys have, you know, those, you know, high ceilings. You got Lamar, you got Kyler, you got Patrick. I, you got I Herbert, just probably won't Josh have. Allen. I think, I think on every single one of these shows we talk about these quarterbacks. I'm just kind of waiting. I mean, like, look, the Minnesota one. We talked about how, like, Kirky. I'll find. I'm fine. I'll take Kirk, man. Like he's yep. QB 17. The dude finished QB 11 two years in a row. Load like, up on wide why not? Running backs <laughs> and let somebody like a pocket passing Tom Brady, a Kirk Cousins, and Aaron Rodgers fall to you. They're fine. Yeah, they're they're fine. Um, you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get that upside with Trey Lance, but uh, you know, Trey Lance could also be a total dud. So, there you go. So moving over here. Running backs, Leonard Fournette, RB8, overall 11. Rashad White comes in, 179 and 60. Still got Keyshawn Vaughn. And they they brought in Gio Bernard as a pass catching back. Look, they got a lot of little pass catching backs. Fournette was amazing last year catching the ball. He did it one time before in Jacksonville and you know proved that he can really do it again. Like, I mean, so, you know, with him, though, like, RB8. What do you think about that, man? That feels a little strong. It does feel a little strong. Um, he did finish as uh, 
RB6 last year. Now, you know, that was to the benefit of a lot of running backs coming down to injuries. Um, but we've seen his ceiling finally with a good quarterback. He's evolved in the passing game, got 84 targets last year. Um, he still didn't get 200 rushing attempts, which we all wanted to see. But let's be honest, Tampa Bay's defense wasn't the greatest last year. I mean, yes, um, you know, they stopped the run. They didn't stop the pass, which means they didn't have the ability to run a lot. That's why Leonard was so involved in the uh, passing game. I think he can absolutely repeat his running back one season. I don't know if it's going to be eight, though. I think it's going to be more towards 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it, though. I'll, I'll be honest. I, uh, I, know, I know it seems a little strong, and, and, and um, I've gotten some questions about this with, with him at the RB8, you know, at the back end of the uh, – first round but i mean you look at some of those other running backs going in the back end of the first round like especially in any sort of like ppr you know either half or ppr right you're looking at those other back end of the first round running backs right you're looking at nick chubb doesn't catch the ball look i admit he's a better runner but doesn't catch the ball that limits his upside um javante williams right total split workload like i you know i the talent is there we got kamara that's fine swift that's fine Fournette, those those guys are all kind of interchangeable to me. Um, if Fournette can prove that he can catch, you know, sixty passes again, um, almost seventy, then I think it's fine. Um, and I mean, Fournette's probably the most durable out of those three, out of Swift and Kamara too. And that's what you love at a running back because obviously running backs are going to miss games, but if you limit that, which a Fournette can do? I mean, he played fourteen last year. I mean, a lot. More he, I mean, Swift. he's he's never played a full season. I will say that. But Th- that's that's true. But he's 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 at least getting double digits majority of his seasons. I feel yeah. like with the workload he gets. So take that with you know with a grain of salt. Yeah, I like it, but I I could see an argument for a whole bunch of those guys at the back end of mm-hmm. the first half. Uh, first he's a good round. pick if you go wide receiver first round. Yeah. Who? So who's the secondary back that you like? Just. 20 seconds. Uh, it's got to be Rashard White. Uh, they didn't show any signs of liking Keyshawn Vaughn last year. Uh, no. Giovanni, <laughs> Giovanni Bernard. Uh, they tried to like him, but, you know, the field didn't like him. So I think Rashard White's probably the guy I'd like to ha- uh, have. They didn't have very much draft capital, and they decided to invest in another running back. So I, it's yeah. probably White. I 100% agree. Receivers, uh, Mike Evans over there at overall 23, wide receiver 8, Chris Godwin hanging around 54, and wide receiver 19 still. They brought in Russell Gage, who, if Godwin misses time, is going to be a complete steal, in my opinion, at 49, but we're still waiting to see there. Still have Brashad Perryman, Cyril Grayson, Tyler Johnson, and still got Scotty White. Um, yep. So let's start with that Chris Godwin deal. Like, you know, he's coming off the ACL injury. I. It really sounds like he's not going to be ready. Um, No. So what kind of impact, you know, does Russell Gage have for what? Maybe the first half-ish of the season? I'd like to see at least probably the first six. Um, Because that ACL for Chris Guy was so late in the season. He's, I mean, I... We live in a great world with, you know, the medical technology coming back with these ACLs quicker than, you know, a oh, yes. lot of, uh, back in the day. But it's it's still a major injury. Not everyone's the same. And I and if I was them, being a contender, you're going to want Chris Godwin late in the year in the playoffs. You're not going to be rushing him back. So I can see at least six games, two eight games. And, man, that's a gold mine. Look at somebody like Antonio Brown last year who only played for seven games. He had 62 targets. All right. Chris Godwin led this team in targets. And if he's out for the six, first uh, six weeks, obviously majority of these are going to be funneled towards Mike Evans. And I actually think he could actually be a better – a steal at wide receiver eight possibly. Um, yeah. But Russell Gage, he's going to be a steal where he's going right now too as well. Yeah, he's at least going to be somebody who um, – I'll probably take a little a little ahead of that ADP. Absolutely. Assuming Godwin's not going to play. then There is some – kind of talk that you know he's expected to be ready for the start of the season but he's basically not going to play the whole off season and so like how what's his conditioning going to be and that kind of thing is that that kind of worries me so you know maybe maybe godwin misses the first few games gage comes in does really well as wide receiver too we've seen him perform fairly well in atlanta at times so 
I think he could be a steal. And then somebody who you could like, just as soon as you get the hint about Godwin's coming, sell him a week early, right? Just be like, I'll take the hit a week early and, you know, get anything in return. And, uh, before Godwin comes back and then you lose all value with gauge in my opinion, but yeah, that's not a terrible idea. Yeah. I, I, I think the, the biggest beneficiary though of Godwin not being there is probably Mike Evans where he's going. Yeah. I like it. I mean, thousand yards like every single year dude <laughs> every single year it's amazing it's, and he's it's a amazing. red zone threat with it's Gronk like a resign. it's like a quiet thousand yards every single year too it's just it's kind of crazy like nobody really talks much about it like he's kind of boring a thousand yards and double digit <laughs> touchdowns the last couple of years like it, it, it is weird right he has the boring name, like a Mike Davis, Mike Evans. <laughs> I, I think it's because, you know, he doesn't catch, you know, 90 to 100 passes. And he's like, he doesn't have those, you know, outside of the 2018 season, right? He doesn't have those 1,500-yard seasons, right? You know, no, it's, but dude it's, like, averages. it's like just over 1,000. and um, He gets 14 yards per reception, though. I mean. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't need very many receptions when you average that much catch. Yeah. You know, like he he it's it's weird with him too though. I think I think it's something to do with the fact that like yeah, he'll finish as an art, as a wide receiver one or maybe just outside of it, right? But like he doesn't have those like he has like outside of like one or two really big weeks, you know, in the mid to upper 20s. He's just like 13, 15, 18. He's not like killing it for you. You know what no. I mean? So like I think Great that's why pe- people just get kind of bored with him, right? Yeah. It's sort of like okay, I, I don't know what it is, but I I think he's I think he's a fine player to draft. So value. tight ends again, this could totally change. So if you're watching this and Gronk has resigned, which I don't know, I kind of expected to happen at some point, right? Cameron, know, you know, yeah. Gronk, Gronk's probably sitting home going like, I don't want to go to training camps. I'm just gonna sit here and play Nintendo and go to the beach or go party on you know whatever. He's probably coming back. Anyway, Cameron Brate's the guy for now. I mean, any any interest in Cameron Brate as a tight end here? I'm thinking not really. Not really, but I'd say keep an eye on him. Um, He's more DFS. Yeah, more DFS. I'd say just keep an eye on him. Tom Brady likes to throw to his tight ends. You know, he picks and chooses what the defense gives him. And oh, of course. Be, He's smart. There's going to just... be those defenses that allow a lot of points to tight ends and a lot of receptions to tight ends. And he's sure. going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. I agree with that. So, all right, let's finish it off with uh, our ending slide here. So, thank you for watching the Tampa Bay Bucks team preview. Hit those like buttons, those subscribe buttons. Leave those comments. We'd like to hear from you. And to check out the rest of our team previews here. See ya.